In this video, you're gonna learn all about how to resolve worship team conflict. You never have any conflict on your worship team, right? Coming up. Hey, Spencer here from leadingworshipwell.com. In this video, we're taking a look at worship team conflict. And let's just say, I know you probably don't have any conflict on your worship team, but let's just talk hypothetically. Maybe there's somebody on your team that's causing a little trouble, right? And you don't know how to handle it because in the church world, it seems like we should just kind of ignore things, right? Like it'd be easier that way. We don't want to offend anybody. We don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. So if somebody's doing something that's making us upset, then we just kind of sweep it under the rug and we think, well, this conflict is going to resolve itself. You know, think of the conflict that you might have seen on definitely on other worship teams, but not your worship team, right? Where singers are like fighting over what parts they get to sing, or maybe it's something like practical, like people aren't showing up to rehearsal on time, which in turn wastes everybody else's time. And so as the leader, it's your responsibility to address that because those problems, I'm telling you, those problems aren't just going to go away. They aren't just gonna magically disappear on their own. People aren't just gonna magically start showing up for a rehearsal on time or stop arguing between team members. You need to address it. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you the five-step process that it takes to address conflict in your worship team and in your worship ministry as well. Even you know if there are other ministries that there's conflict between where it's like the worship ministry or you as the worship leader thinks this thing and then maybe for example, your senior pastor disagrees. What do you do in that situation? That's what we're gonna talk about today. Before we get to that though, I wanna hear right now, how do you deal with conflict in your worship team? Do you have a process that you follow? Do you have something in mind where it's like, okay, there's this problem going on right now and this is what I'm going to do to address it? Or are you more of one of those people who just kind of sits back and lets it unfold? You figure it'll work itself out. I've been there. It's easier to do that. So don't feel bad if that's you, but I want to share with you a better way in this video. So let me know in the comments below, how do you deal with conflict in your worship team? I'll talk to you in a second. Thanks for sharing your answer down below. Now, let's get into this five-step process for dealing with conflict in your worship team. The first thing to do when there is conflict in your worship team is to go directly to that person. And I know like in your mind, you know that that's the right thing, but how often do we find ourselves complaining to other people about the problem that we have with someone else? It's so much easier to do that, to like wait until that person leaves worship rehearsal and then it's just you and somebody else in your worship team and you're like, man, what's up with them? Like they're never on time, right? They never do what they're supposed to do or why are they so combative tonight, you know, and we just talk to other people about the problem that we have with somebody, but we never actually address it with the person that we have a problem with. And going directly to the person that you have a problem with is always the best solution. It's not always the easiest solution, but it is always the best solution because you're never going to solve a problem on your worship team, a conflict on your worship team, simply about talking or simply by talking about it with some person who's not even involved in the conflict. That's not going to solve your problem. They might be able to give you guidance and advice, but at the end of the day, you're going to have to go to that person one-on-one -on -one and say, hey, Jerry, why do you keep showing up late to a worship rehearsal? That's not how you should approach, approach it. I'll share more of that in the next step, but you got to go to the person. That is actually what the Bible tells us to do too, right? It says, go to the person that you are in conflict with and talk to them. And then if that doesn't solve the conflict, then bring other people into it, other leadership. But so often we skip that first step because it's uncomfortable to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. So whoever you are having a conflict with in your worship team right now, I want you to know that the best thing you can do is to go to that person right now and say, this is what I'm seeing and this is how I'm feeling and I'd like to address it so that we can move on. Like that is 
the first step in the process. Don't make it like, and the other part of that is if you talk to everybody else on your worship team, that's eventually going to get back to the person that you have a problem with or that there is conflict with. And so it's better to just go up to the, to go to the person up front and tell them, this is what I'm seeing and I'd like to fix this together, which brings us into the second step. The second step for resolving conflict in your worship team, now that we've gone directly to the person, we need to work on our presentation, right? So this is what I want you to remember. Attack the problem, not the person. All right, we're still on a worship team. We're, work, we're working together. We want that to be the unifying thing that we do is that we're working together in all things. We don't wanna work against each other. And so how do you do that when it comes to conflict in your worship team? Well, you attack the problem and not the person. So what does that look like in practicality? Well, let's say that somebody's showing up late to worship rehearsal. If you attacked the person, then you would walk up to the person who's late to rehearsal all the time and you would say, I can't believe that you're always late. Why are you always late? Just show up on time. What are you doing, right? We don't wanna come at them like that. We want to identify the problem that is causing them to be late. And so how do you do it? You say, hey, you know, Jerry, I'll use that name again. I noticed that you've been showing up late to worship rehearsal pretty consistent, pretty consistently. Is there something going on that you're not able to get here on time? Like, what's going on? And I want you to say that, like, sincerely, not in a passive aggressive way where it's like, there must be something going on, right? No, we don't wanna talk like that. We wanna have genuine concern. There's something going on in this person's life that is not allowing them to show up to rehearsals on time. And maybe they just need to, first of all, maybe they just need to hear that that is a concern of yours and they didn't really know it was a problem. Or maybe you're gonna find out, for example, that like they work later than they used to and now they get off of work at 6.30 and they can't show up to a 6.30 worship practice. And so you're gonna to have to navigate that. But then you've identified the problem together and then you can work on a solution together instead of just attacking the person. So the step in the conflict is to, in the conflict resolution is to actually identify what the problem is. And the problem isn't the person. You can't make the person the problem. Attack the problem, not the person. All right, so identify what that is, make it clear, and then work on a solution together. The third thing you need to do to properly resolve conflict on your worship team is we've gone to the person, we've attacked the problem, not the person, and now, number three, you need to clearly articulate why you feel the way that you feel. You know, if there's a problem on your worship team, you're just, it, it doesn't help to just point out the problem. You have to help people see the effects of what the problem is causing, and you need to clearly articulate that to the person. So just going back to that, it, because I think this is like the most common conflict on worship teams, at least at a base level, is that people don't show up to worship rehearsals on time. So you can say to them, hey, I noticed you haven't been showing up to worship rehearsals on time. You know, when that happens, that makes the rest of the worship team have to wait for you. And then we're 15 minutes late during worship rehearsal. And then we don't get to work on as much stuff as we usually do. And so is there any way that you could get here earlier or what's going on that's not allowing you to be here on time? And that's a much better conversation than stop doing what you're doing and just show up on time, right? Give people a reason, like let them know why it's a problem. It's not fair to just point out things and say, this is wrong, and then never give them a reason why it's wrong. Or maybe you could say, you know, we agreed to this. We set these expectations as a worship team that we were gonna show up to rehearsal on time, which should be in your process for people joining the worship team. That should be an expectation, and you should be setting that over and over and over again. And then you can just clearly point to that expectation and say, here's what I'm feeling. I'm feeling that the expectations that we agreed to together whenever you joined the worship team, they aren't being met. And so I want to figure out how we can meet those expectations. So clearly articulate why you feel what you feel. And I want to just uh, encourage you to think about 
what clearly articulating it means. Because sometimes we say things, especially if we're like angry in the moment, and they sound really clear in our head because we think we know what we want to say, but we haven't actually clearly articulated what we want to say. We just kind of spew out words and it doesn't make a lot of sense. So formulate what you're going to say in your head before you say it to the person. Say, these are the main points that I want to tell this person and think about it ahead of time. And then you can clearly articulate what you, you want to say and say, this is the problem that I see. This is how I feel about it. How are we going to fix it together? And that is how you clearly articulate yourself. The fourth step in the process of resolving conflict in your worship team is to please do this discussion in person. All right, these discussions, they can't happen in a nuanced way over email or over text or over Zoom or over a phone call, right? We need to talk to people in person. There's so much ha that happens whenever you talk in person that doesn't happen in just a text thread, especially, or, you know, Facebook Messenger or whatever you want to use. We need to hear people's, uh, like, tone of voice whenever we're talking. And specifically, the other person that you're talking to needs to hear your tone of voice whenever you're talking. Because you can type something or you can text something to somebody and say, hey, I noticed you're late to rehearsal. Uh, can we solve that problem together and maybe send out a quick text like that? And they're going to read into that and probably see it as passive aggressive, where as if you did it in person and you said, hey, you know, I noticed that you've been late. I won't go through the whole spiel again, right? But you're going to be able to explain yourself and express yourself in a way that you can't do through text or through a phone call, right? And so take the person aside after worship rehearsal, don't do it in front of other people. After other people have left and say, you know, hey, Jerry, can I talk to you after worship rehearsal tonight? And just lay out what we talked about in the previous steps. But please do it in person. It's never worth it to do it over text or over email or over a phone call, right? So just do it in person whenever they are actually there and work through the problem together. And finally, number five, the fifth thing to keep in mind when dealing with conflict resolution in your worship ministry is I want you to consider this, and this goes two ways, but I want you to submit to the leadership in your church. I want you to submit to the leadership in your church. I believe that God has placed those people in your church in that position of leadership, whether you agree with them or not, for a specific reason. And so, and I know that's like a touchy subject, but we are called to submit to the leaders in our church because they have a usually a bigger picture in mind. And so I want you to think about that in two ways. If you're just on a worship team and you're a worship team member, like I know some of you are who watch these videos, think about what it means to submit to your worship team leader, even whenever it doesn't feel like the right thing. And I want you to hear me on this. Like there's a difference between I don't agree with this person spiritually, like so much so that I'm not going to do what they say to do. But if it's like on a small practical issue, then just submit to what they want because they are the leader of the group. And that's what it means to be a good worship team member is understanding that the worship team leader has a bigger picture in mind than what you see. Like they are responsible for everything that happens in your worship ministry. And so they see a bunch of things that you don't see. And whenever they're making a decision, they usually have that whole picture in mind while you who are just like the bass player not that that's a lesser position but you don't have in mind the thought of okay not only do i have to think of my position but i also have to think of the other five band members in my worship team on top of that i have to think about how that plays into a sunday morning and what we do i have to think about what it represents to our church i have to think about how to lead our church on a sunday morning i have to think about how to lead my church throughout the entire week like this is the big picture that your worship team leader has whenever they're working through some conflict so just 
honor them and understand that they have the bigger picture in mind. So that's the first way to think about submitting to your leadership. But the other thing is if you are a worship leader and you are on staff at your church or you're just the official uh, leader of the worship ministry at your church, I want you to consider what it means to submit to your pastor. Surprisingly, pastors and worship leaders don't always have the same opinion on things, but it's your pastor's responsibility to pastor and shepherd the entire church. So if they really are insistent about you doing something some way and it doesn't go against your spiritual beliefs, then just do it. You know, if you're like, I really want to do six songs on Sunday, but my pastor only gives me time for four. Well, guess what? Your pastor is in charge of your church. They are the, well, Christ is the head of the church, but then under that is the pastor and the elders of the church. And so you have to submit to their leadership. That's what it means to be a part of the church. And that's not always easy, but that's what we have to do. So submit to leadership whenever there's conflict and you aren't the one who is the leader. I know that's not easy to do. It's not easy to hear, but I truly believe that that's the right way. Even if you don't agree with what the leader is saying in a in a practical sense and you think that if you just did this, it would be better. And you can explain yourself like there's room for this to push against those expectations that the leader has and try to stretch them a little bit. But after at the end of the day, if they say no, like absolutely not, we aren't going to do that. We're going to do this instead. Then just submit to that leadership because ultimately they are in charge. So there it was, the conversation on conflict. That's a great way to improve your worship team is by figuring out how to solve conflict because there's going to be conflict in your worship team. If you, though, want to focus on your personal worship leading and making it better, which is something we should all be doing, then I've got something free for you. There's a link down in the description below to a free training called Five Tips to Instantly Improve Your Worship Leading. And in that training, guess what? I share with you five tips to instantly improve your worship leading. These are just five simple things that you just have to know and make the effort to do, and they will improve your worship leading. It's a short, like 20 minute audio training. So check that out in the description below. Other than that, thanks so much for joining me today. Until I see you in the next video, keep leading worship well.